Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to take a look at the power supply to charge our capacitor bank. Like I said in the previous video, I want the power supply to be really fast and to be powerful. Those uh, two conditions go hand in hand because the better your power supply is, uh, the faster it can charge your capacitors. Well, today we are going to take a look at what kind of topology I'm going to use to do that and why I'm going to use such topology. Well, I'm going to use the, the full bridge converter topology. Uh, you can see a little diagram of the, of the uh, general topology. What happens is that here we have the positive input, here's the negative input. Here we have some filter capacitor. As the positive current draws this way, T1 and T4 turn on. So we get a closed circuit in this direction. Then T1 and T4 turns off. And we get T3 and T2 to turn on. And we will create a negative cycle of the current at the secondary winding. From there it's just rectification and filtering to charge our capacitors. This isn't the ideal way to do it, but it's the general way to do it. I'm going to uh, modify the topology to maximize efficiency and, uh, and make sure I don't have to use a heat sink because that would add extra weight to the design. If you take a look at what, what causes the losses of our uh, design and what is the inefficient part of the topology, well, we can see here the high voltage uh, for rectification. If you use an IGPT for a rectification, it's about 103 watts in power loss. If you take a look at the transformer, it's about 8 watts. That's not much. And if you take a look at, if we use a Schottky diode in the low voltage side, we get almost 300 watts of power loss. That's, that's huge. And the MOSFETs on the low side, the switching MOSFETs, they almost create 123 watts of uh, power loss. And the inductor, 1.5 watts, which is almost nothing. So, in order to maximize efficiency, we need to uh, minimize these power losses. Well, we are obviously not going to use a Schottky diode because it's so inefficient. But instead, we are going to use zero voltage switching, which I'm going to explain a little bit later, and synchronous rectification. Synchronous rectification is just not using a a full bridge a rectifier or just rectification but you use a MOSFET and it's and it's a integrated diode for a rectification this means you won't have any conducting losses on the diodes but simply on only on the MOSFET and the MOSFETs uh, RDS on so the uh, the resistance when it's on is much lower than uh, a normal diode as we can take a look here for full wave synchronous rectification is almost 92.6 percent efficiency if you add another sil uh, synchronous rectification with zero voltage switching we get 94.2 percent efficiency that's a lot and if we add more things to it we can almost reach 90 96 percent efficiency but I am not uh, very experienced in power electronics, so I hope I can at least reach the 90% efficiency. <laughs> but what the synchronous rectification does is that it's just turning on when the half cycle passes. For, uh, for example, the positive, if you take a look in here, if you take the positive side, it turns on and the ne negative side 
returns on. It's simple as that. So now we are going to take a look at zero voltage switching. I've seen on the internet people use the term zero voltage switching or ZVS without actually knowing what it means and it and it's used r very wrong. Uh, yeah. But before we understand what zero voltage switching is, we must understand what hard switching is. For example, we have uh, this must represent the current on the drain of a MOSFET and this represents the, the drain to source voltages as you can see when the MOSFET turns off and when it turns on we have I times V which is power what means that we have power losses in these areas which can lead to very big efficiency losses for example when we have high currents which we, we will have and voltages which will create uh, lots of power and therefore lots of heat so we must tackle these problems by just simply uh, making the gap bigger and create something like this where we don't have where we don't have any switching losses so that is going to be the challenge for zero voltage switching so the first method for zero voltage switching is the lossy snubber it uses a capacitor and the resistor in series so the that the uh, the switching voltages get mitigated by the resist resistor but uh, this also induces again losses so we are just going to skip that right away without going into it the next method is passive lossless snubber which is if we have a switch and then we just put an extra capacitor in parallel with the switch where the where the waveforms get more separated from each other or have a lower rise curve so that we just uh, did, did what we did here just shift this over but that usually only works good with buck converters which only use one switch so we are also not going to take approach that what we are going to take a look at is active lossless snubbing which is going to be a lot harder but it's going to be pretty effective what we are going to do in this case is changing every single phase of every single MOSFET to to make sure this is accomplished and it's going to be a bit more difficult than that and we're going to take a look at it now we are going to take a look at active lossless, lossless snubbing uh, what happens first is phase 1 which is Q1 and Q3 are turned on therefore we get the current flow through this resonant inductor to Q3 and back to ground what happens then is that there is energy stored in this inductor and Q3 is turned off. What happens then is that the current here is stuck in this point. So it, charges to start, it starts to charge these capacitors uh, which are output capacitors of the MOSFETs and you can find these capacitors on the data sheet of the MOSFETs. So when these capacitors are charged 
this diode here becomes forward biased. Therefore, the voltage across this MOSFET starts to drop. You have zero voltage across this MOSFET now because the same p potential is uh, right here and right here. So we have now no voltage across this MOSFET. Therefore, we can directly change it to the on state and therefore we start to get the current flow from here to here. So that completes phase one to four, which creates one half cycle on the secondary side. So what happens next? Or oh well, what we have now is that Q1 was on and Q4, which create this half cycle. So what happens next is that there's still uh, energy stored in this resonant inductor and Q1 turns off. So we have a current flow from the inductor through here to through Q4 because it's still turned on and you must imagine here still is the default source or capacitor and then we get the current flow from here and it's charged to charge Q2's capacitor. Once it's charged this diode will become forward biased and create a loop from here through here. Once Q2 is forward biased we will turn on the switch and current will flow from positive through Q4 through the through the transformer through the resonant inductor to Q2 to the negative side. So we will have another half cycle this way. So that creates the second half cycle and then we just uh, start everything all over again so we get a nice zero voltage switching while having still the normal half cycles. So what is going to be the challenge here is to have every single MOSFET turn on and off at their own specific timings. So we can't just use a standard square wave and then with this 180 phase shift now we need to create phase shift between every single MOSFET and that's going to be the challenge because I want to use an Arduino for the microcontroller instead of a aftermarket uh, driver so it's going to be all done by hand self and uh, that's going to be quite a challenge because these are four MOSFETs and the Arduino only has three uh, timers you can access and I have a bit of trouble because I can access two timers but the third one is a little bit harder but I will show you what I currently have so now we are going to take a look at some waveforms uh, if I turn on the Arduino you will have a signal shortly Okay, so what we can see here, excuse me, oh, is that we have two waveforms. We have one and two. Uh, they are both switching at 100 kilohertz, which I have programmed myself, and. They're both 100 degrees out of phase from each other. We can use this for the most basic switching for every power supply that exists. But as I said, we need four waveforms that look something like this. So that's going to be the challenge. I can only do two waveforms so far. But I'm very close to getting at least three of them to work. But this, this would work just with a normal hard switching full bridge or half bridge or every kind of uh, power supply. This can be used for motors and stuff. And I'll make a tutorial soon where I show how I did this so you can do it yourself. 
So I'm going to try and build a normal full bridge with this with these this program that I have currently set up on my Arduino, which you can see here. Let's put some light on it. There. Just using a normal Arduino Nano. And here's my laptop where I programmed it. So it's currently switching one side at 46% uh, duty cycle and the, the blue wave at 41. Because we want uh, that time for the current to kind of recover from the inductance from the transformer or else we have even greater switching losses which we do not want so I have introduced a dead time right here so we have a little bit more efficiency to play with but I am going to try and program the four additional phases which is going to be a little bit harder because I have successfully added a third waveform but it's capped on 32 kilohertz and I don't want 32 kilohertz but it should do fine actually but I have uh, the transformers and inductors I have calculated for are for 100 kilohertz but if you want to do this yourself you don't need an oscilloscope this is just to show you what's happening you can just use a multimeter use the duty cycle phase and the frequency phase and that should do it because the Arduino produces a pretty good square wave which is quite useful to use for additional extra other projects or motor controllers charging your lithium ion batteries I'll, I'll kind of stuff like that but I think uh, this week I'm going to build a normal full bridge using just a broken wall adapter and see what I can do with this and I'm going also going to use tutorial make a tutorial on how to do this and hopefully you can figure out yourself what to do further with it which is pretty hard if you haven't ever looked at this what I'm going to show you but I'll show you step by step how to achieve this so these are the components I'm going to work with this is an uh, Arduino Nano just bought from AliExpress or eBay it's a, ch a Chinese knockoff but only thing we care about is this chip which is an Atmega 328 and it's just manufactured uh, in every way on every board so it doesn't matter where you get these from uh, they should work just fine and second component is just a uh, normal NPN or an N-channel MOSFET which is also from China uh, can show you what it is but it's a generic 50 volt 50 amp MOSFET and the transformer I have salvaged from a broken wall adapter or I broke it perhaps and a full bridge rectifier for get, uh, changing the AC to DC and I'll see what I can do with uh, the waveforms I just showed you and uh, Arduino MOSFET and this, this, just these four components and then I will, that should do it for a prototype uh, power supply and then uh, meanwhile I will also work on the four phases to uh, at least achieve 94% efficiency but I'm still waiting on my inductors I have bought and we will see when they arrive so I hope you enjoyed this video and it's been it's a weird day because I usually update uh, upload on Friday but I'm I have a vacation so I'll just work on this kind of stuff for the coming week and 
show you kind of what my progress is and uh, yeah I'll see you soon because I will make uh, the tutorial also pretty soon so please subscribe and thanks for watching